hope you all are doing well so this is the video solutions for the week 8 graded assignments so this is question number 1 it reads the following pseudocode is executed using the scores table at the end of execution matrix represents the adjacency matrix of the graph generated from the scores table so we have here an empty dictionary that is d and in this first block of code right here what we're doing is we're reading each card or each row x in the table and um, if the sequence number is not already present we create a sequence number that is the sequence number is the key here and the value is another dictionary with the subjects or the initial uh, letter of the subject that physics chemistry maths that is p c and m and corresponding to it the value again is the marks in that subject so maybe an 85 in physics um, a 90 say a 90 in chemistry and again in mathematics let's say <coughs> an 85 so this is how your dictionary looks so it's a dictionary with your sequence number as a key and the value corresponding to that sequence number is another dictionary which contains again key value pairs of the initial letter of the subject and the marks obtained in that subject so all three subjects respectively so this is your dictionary now after we are done with this part and the dictionary is created then we have three matrices matrix ph matrix ch and matrix ma and uh, we have this procedure called get adjacency matrix or get adj matrix and it takes two parameters that is your dictionary and the first letter of the subject whatever it is p c or m for physics chemistry and mathematics respectively now we have the procedure let's see what it does it takes n that is the length of the keys of the dictionary that means as we all know that keys of d where dictionary is the parameter here it returns to you a list with all the keys so in this case it will return to you a list of the sequence numbers from 0 say up to uh, 29 maybe if we take the data set that was used in the, um, the preceding classes and then if you run a procedure length on it or a function length so what does it return it returns to you an integer which is the total number of elements in that list so in this case 0 to 29 means it would return 30 so this is just an example the length would vary depending on the number of elements in that particular dictionary now we create a matrix with n rows and n columns and then we iterate through the rows and columns like for each i in the rows of the matrix and for each j in the columns of the matrix if i is not equal to j so why is i not equal to j because if i is equal to j then we are comparing a student with themselves which is not um, it's not needed because we don't need to compare student 0 with 0 itself so this as you see is the diagonal of the matrix and this need not be touched so we can compare 0 with 1 0 with 2 3 or even 4 you know just for simplicity let's take five students a range from 0 to 4 and uh, we see that in a variable diff or difference we take the difference of marks between i and j so here please note that we are not taking the absolute value absolute value would mean that if we even pass a negative integer it would return only the positive value of it but here we are taking the raw difference which means that i minus j will not be equal to j minus i so as the learners would have learnt it's this is a commut commutative property so that does not apply here and um, we see that if the difference between i and j is in the range of 10 to 20 so this is a closed interval 10 to 20 with the endpoints included so in this case we keep uh, the element at matrix ij so if you are taking student 0 and 2 so at at this position the value or the element here would be 1 
So if the range, if the range does not apply to say zero and one, so it would still remain a zero. If it does not apply for zero and three, again a zero. Similarly for zero and four, if it doesn't apply, again it's a zero. So when does the range not apply? Say the ma the difference between i and j. So let's say between zero and one was less than ten, it's still zero. Maybe zero and three, it was greater than twenty. So still the the matrix i j does not become one. So in that case, we see here that only zero and two maybe was between ten and twenty. The difference of marks between zero and two. So in that case, here we have a one. So also note that because i minus j is not equal to j minus one. So when we come to two, say one, two, three, and four. So when we come to two and zero, so here the marks would not be within this range. because as i told you i minus j need not be equal to j minus i therefore the element here would still remain zero so this would be important for your upcoming questions so let's see what the question states here it states that if matrix ph ij is equal to 1 then so they are asking in what case would the matrix ij become 1 so we know that it's only if the student i scores at least 10 at least means it should be greater than or equal to 10 the difference between i and j should be greater than or equal to 10 that is what at least means and at most which means that the difference should not be more than 20 which means lesser than equal to 20 so the difference of marks between i and j should fall within this range which means that your second option is the correct one so this is the end of question number 1 and uh, as you see here it's given to you in words so you can download this uh, ppt as a pdf the link to which will be given in the description below and this is the end of question number 1 let's move on to question number 2 so this is your question number 2 So what it states is, choose the correct statement or statements based on the above pseudo code. So the first statement is for all i comma j with i not equal to j, matrix P H I J plus matrix P H J I is equal to one. So with these type of questions, you have to try to prove the statement wrong. you have to try to find a case where the where this statement does not apply so when is matrix ph of ij and ji is going to be equal to 1 say student 0 and student 1 have a difference between um, uh, 10 and 20 i think that's the question that is given so in that case here it would be 1 so let's say the difference between 0 and 1 was 15 marks but if the roles were reversed if we are, we were checking for student j and i that is 1 and 0 so in this case the marks would be negative 15 so in that case this would definitely not lie in your range so when we come to 1 0 in this particular matrix so we would find that at this position the value would be 0 so in that case if you take matrix of i j that is 0 1 which is this plus matrix of ji which is uh, 1, 0 in that case 0 plus 1 would be equal to 15 uh, pardon me 0, 1 would be equal to 1 in that case this would satisfy your criteria but we want to find a case where it does not apply so let's say between student 0 and 2 the difference in marks was greater than 20 so in that case here it would be Zero, and again, if the marks between let's say zero and two, let's say the marks were twenty-five. So now, if I were to change the roles and I make it two minus zero, in that case, the marks would simply just be minus twenty-five, because the roles were reversed. So in that case, you would just get the negative answer of what you're supposed to get. So in that case, still. when it when you go to the second row and you look at the first column again you would see that this particular difference does not lie in that range so it would still be zero so in that case when you take matrix ij that is 0 uh, 
the element at that position is 0 and at 2 0 matrix 2 0 element is still 0 which means that the final answer is also 0. So, this does not work in all scenarios. So, for the second option we see that for all i comma j with i not equal to j if matrix p h i j is equal to 1 then matrix p h j i is equal to 0. Now, this particular scenario it works in all cases. Why is it? Because as I told you if you were to get a particular difference within this range of 10 and 20 closed interval 10 and 20. In that case the difference if marks when the when the order is interchanged that is say 1 minus 0 and 0 minus 1. So, in that case the answer would be in negatives which would not satisfy a criteria and it always it would be 0. So, this option is correct. So, let us just go through the others to see if any other options meet our criteria. So, we see that for all i and j with i not equal to j if matrix p h i j is equal to 0 then matrix p h j i is equal to 1. Again we already took an example in the first case where we saw that this would not be correct because say we went through the first row that is row 0 and we went to the second column and we saw that it is a 0 because we told that it was the difference in marks was greater than 20. So, in that case even if you go to 2 0 that is when the roles are interchanged it becomes 2 and 0. In that case 2 it is a 0. So, it need not always be the case that if matrix p h of i j is equal to 0 then the difference in the other way when it is j minus i should be 1. So, this also does not meet our criteria. And the next one we see that for all i j with i not equal to j if matrix p h i j is equal to 1 then matrix p h j i is also equal to 1. So, again this does not this is actually impossible because as I told you it is not the absolute value and subtraction is not commutative. So, in this case it does not actually pass any of the criteria. So, this is also not the answer and then we see the last one for all i j with i not equal to j if matrix p h i j is equal to 0 then matrix p h j i is equal to uh, also is equal to 0. So, again this need not be the case let us say between uh, student 0 and 3 the marks the difference in marks 0 and 3 this difference in marks was maybe a minus 12 because 3 scored greater than 0. So, when we go to the third or the fourth row in fact that is row number 3. So, we see that in that case the difference may be or actually will be 12 which would be in that particular range that you wanted to check that is 0 to uh, 10 to 20. So, in that case it would be 1. So, that means again we have found a criteria in which or a situation in which this particular statement fails that means it does not apply for all i j. So, we only have one correct answer here. So, that is your second option and again you can see that it has been given in words. So, that uh, it will be easier for the learners to understand. So, that is the end of question number 2 moving on to question number 3.